we were panicked about O'Madeline going off the air. So we, we um, were trying to come up with something quickly. And we adored Bill Cosby as, as uh, viewers, as people who would know him through his, his comedy albums and who you know, watched his, uh, his brilliant career. So we called up William Morris one day, and we had a good relationship with them because they, um, they had helped us uh, package O'Madeline. And we had a meeting with Larry Auerbeck, who was a great uh, supporter of ours, the uh, agent at uh, William Morris who uh, was most re involved with, with television dealings, and his boss, who happened to be uh, Bill Cosby's uh, agent, Norman Brokaw. And they said that uh, it was possible, not necessarily probable, but possible that Bill might be entertaining the idea of doing a series. Um, he had done I Spy, but had not done anything. In, in, the last thing he had done in television had been a pretty average variety show, and it hadn't performed very well. And so he wasn't looking to do something, but we were just so enthused about the possibility of working with him that um, they asked us if uh, we could get together with Bill. and. That was a, the start of it, but it, it was a very tortured birth. It wasn't something that happened based on, on one meeting. Well, we had a dinner at his house that William Morris um, um, arranged, and we basically talked to Bill about doing what he was talking about in his monologues, about um, taking that um, point of view and putting it into a half-hour comedy form. Um, and he was resistant at first because I think he had been thinking if he was going to do a series, he would want to do a cop show he was thinking about first. Yeah. And if not that, if it were going to be a half hour, then he was uh, wanting it to be sort of a, uh, you know, to portray a lower class family where he would be something like a limousine driver and his wife would be something like a plumber and they'd have too many kids and not enough money. And... Um, that's really not what he was talking about in his monologues at the time. In his monologues, he was talking, as he always did, about the commonality of the human experience, not the particular um, specific thing about being a black family with not enough money and not enough resources in this world today. So we were trying to bring him back to the premise of what had been his entire career, which is the commonality universality of the human experience, taking the things that are universal and talking about them, man-woman relationships, parenting. Um, he had very strong points of view about all those things, and we were really passionate about servicing those points of view. So that was the discussion that we had till 1 o'clock in the morning at his house at dinner. Well, as Tommy said, I don't think he was crazy about doing a series. Um, and um, One of the things that he... he, he I think he had certain conditions that were that ended up being actually very helpful to making the series so great. One of them was that the series, if he was going to do it, had to be done in New York, and that was something that we would had we uh, swallowed very hard about because we were all Marcy and I were raising young children here, and the idea of doing a series in New York, which we knew was always going to be difficult because it would be hard to find good writers and it was going to be more expensive, and we were deficit financing this ourselves, so there was a lot of uh, financial risk. All those were kind of scary to us, and um, I mean, as, as we know, it all worked out, and in fact, you know, we can talk later about how I think that shaped the uniqueness of the show in many ways, but one of the reasons Bill wanted to do that was because he wasn't sure that the series would work, and he didn't want to leave home, and remember he would say, you know, at least if I'm canceled, I don't have to fly home. So it was very important. It was, it was essential that this series be made in New York City. Do you remember when it all clicked for you at, at the point where, where you knew that you would be going to Syria, that you'd be doing this? We remember a specific scene, a line in a scene. It was, uh, actually, we knew that we had a terrific cast. We knew we had a terrific script. Ed Weinberg and Michael Leeson had written a terrific script. Actually, we were so late, it was only a 15-minute presentation. But... Um, there was a, on tape night when we were taping the pilot and Jay Sandridge was directing, there was a particular moment. We were very pleased. It was going very well. And I think we thought even, you know, at the beginning of that taping that we had something terrific here. Um, but there was a moment 
during the taping where um, there was a scene where Bill was talking to his son, Theo, um, played by Malcolm Jamal Warner. And um, the scene was about, you know, Theo was saying, you know, I just want to be regular people. You and mom, you're professionals, you're a doctor, she's a lawyer. I'm not that, dad. I'm just a regular person. And you and mom just have to love me for what I am. I'm just a regular person. That sounded very much like what half our comedies were in those days. I mean, the, the children always knew more than the parents. Um, Family Ties was on the air, and Michael Fox's whole uh, character was based on the fact that he knew more than his parents, really. And that, that was the, the state of everything, drama and comedy at the time. You know, the parents always knew more than they think. So when Theo said, just love me for what I am, a regular person, the audience dutifully went like that, because they, you know. And then Bill said, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And the audience went crazy. They stood up, they applauded, they, they whooped, they went woo, because they hadn't heard that before. You know, they hadn't heard the parents taking the household back and the parents saying, you know what, <laughs> I'm right and you're wrong. To the extent that Jay Sanders, the director, said, okay, who, who turned on that applause sign? He got furious. He thought somebody had turned the applause sign and we went, we didn't do it, you know. So at that moment, I think we knew that we had a hit.